so we are outside of the chateau on the main road. We are waiting for a horse and cart to come up um, that's going to be attending today's Apple Press event. Um, as you can see as well, it is a bit chilly. We have hats and big coats on, so the temperature is starting to drop here. You will have also noticed that Graham still isn't with us. Um, we remain optimistic about when he's going to be back with us at the chateau, um, but jobs have had to continue at the chateau. So we are now starting to do jobs that are a little bit more out of our comfort zone. Uh, but I think the famous saying is the show must go on. Good morning from the UK everybody. It's um, Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday morning here. Um, still no news from the French consulate, so it's coming up to Friday will be three weeks since I submitted my visa application. Um, the company I'm working with to streamline the application um, aren't able to give me any information at all. All they can tell me is it's being processed. So. Um, Little tip for you if you are ever going to apply for a French visa, just do it yourself because no matter what company tells you, they have uh, access to different things to be able to streamline it. They can't. This is the second company I've used and they're both as useless as each other. So just do it yourself. It's fairly straightforward um, and they can't do anything more than, than you can. So that's an update on where we are with my visa. So I'm still in the UK. I've pushed my crossing back now until next Monday. Um, but if I don't hear anything by tomorrow, then that's going to be unlikely as well. So it's, um, yeah, be, be over three weeks, probably four weeks by the time I, I hear anything. So that's frustrating. Um, but it's nice to spend time with the UK family. And um, I watched last week's episode with interest to see all the hard work that Jake and Danielle had done. And also been reading through your comments on the um, that you've left on the site. So thank you very much for that. Just wanted to pick up on a couple of those with regards to the Jeet. Now the doors and windows in the Jeet are single glazed um, metal framed windows, um, which aren't suitable for a, for a, a dwelling. Um, so they will need to be replaced. Um, we will keep the same style, but they were replaced with with wooden double glazed units. Um, to, to provide better insulation um, and you know, better, better structural content all round really. So that's the, the windows side address. So we won't be changing the windows dramatically, only upgrading them to double glazed. Um, with regards to the second door, which a lot of you have mentioned, now I know Jake said in his video that that door will be blocked up. Um, that's not a decision that's been 100% made yet, but that door will only lead into that bedroom space. So in terms of providing a second exit for fire regulations, that is not required by the building regulations in France because of the size of the sheet. And we are working closely with a French architect um, who's doing all the planning permissions and building control aspects for us. So please be assured that we are well advised on that part um, and it isn't something that we're just doing willy-nilly. Um, as to whether the door remains just as, a, as an exit from that bedroom, yet is yet to be decided. Um, it would certainly probably be cheaper to leave it in place, but then we've got the expense of replacing that door because it is rotten and, and single glazed. Um, the other option is of course to half brick it up and, and make it into a nice large window. 
um, so there's an option there but that's yet to be decided um, but I just wanted to update all the people there that have been asking about uh, a second fire exit it's not required under French building controls it's not necessary because the, the first exit is large and it's right next door to the second exit anyway so it's not going to provide anything in terms of an additional fire escape um, so please rest assured that we have taken advice and, and that's all in hand. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoy this week's video and as soon as I have some more news, I will of course update you. Thanks for watching. So my materials delivery has just come, so I'm gonna open it and see what I've got. Ooh. Oh Christ, there's loads of it. That's quite thick, maybe too thick. We'll see. Uh, so that was the Dacron, that's like the stuffingy stuff. Oh, some Hessians or burlap, I think it's called, to cover the tops of the webbing. God knows if I've got enough. And then some hair for the stuffing. This is the part I'm not so keen on, but we're going to give it a go. I may also order some like polyester chair filler as well to combine with the hair. As the famous saying is, the show must go on. So we need to continue with the renovation and that means that I'm going to be doing jobs that are slightly out of my comfort zone because I've never done them before. So the first job is to fit the sink trap um, and therefore the waste that then goes down into the waste behind the dresser. That will involve cutting some holes and cutting into the back of the dresser to run the waste. So I need to be very delicate with what I'm doing. So I'm not going to do too much talking as I'm going to be doing lots of concentrating. Uh, but hopefully we'll put you in a position where you can see everything happening. Okay, so with the sink and the waste and the tap successfully put onto the dresser, uh, we're now going to move on to trying to fit the lighting that's going to go around the dressing gown alcove. Now, it's not just as simple as putting a, an LED battery powered light. Uh, we are going to try and run it from the main light switch so that when you turn the main switch on in the ensuite, the uh, mirror and the dressing gown alcove will turn on all at the same time. Um, so it involves a little bit of drilling. A little bit of running cables to join them up and then uh, and hopefully we'll have some working LEDs going around the outcome.
So apparently my Makita drill wasn't mad enough for the job. Um, so I've resorted uh, to the Bosch hammer drill with a much, much longer, more aggressive drill bit on it. Let's see how it goes. Oh, we're doing the crouch. Yeah. Um, so you may be wondering why we're back up in this space on the second floor. And the reason being is because when we've been trying to drill from the kitchen attic, which is just behind this wall, um, we've realized that we're getting to a point uh, where the drill doesn't go any further. And that's because we're hitting a wooden beam. Um, so the plan is to now um, take some more floorboards up in this section of the room. Um, please do not panic, um, these floorboards were likely going to have to come up anyway uh, because this is going to be an ensuite in this bedroom so it would be um, tiled anyhow um, and the floor would have to be lowered in order to fit the walk-in shower so please do not panic that we're taking up the floorboards, um, we're trying to do it as, as neatly as we possibly can to, prefer, to preserve them should we have to use them elsewhere in the chateau. Um, but yeah the plan is to now take these floorboards up um, just along this beam here, just so I can get a drill down. I'm then going to drill through the beam with a wood drill bit, and then hopefully with the SDS drill, we'll be able to then, yeah, drill from this side into the kitchen attic, which will then have a hole, which then... Poke some electrics through. Yeah. It's, it's one step further in a job that seems to be taking a lot, lot longer than it should. But worthwhile. Yeah. Okay, right, let's go. Okay, so you join us back upstairs, there's a little bit of a gap in the footage. Um, reason being is it took us a lot longer than we thought it was going to. We had uh, quite a few uh, hurdles to overcome, uh, but we finally managed to get fully through the wall uh, to a point where we can now see our stick coming through the other side. Uh, now we need to do is, is make sure that we uh, feed the wire going back through that way so that we can have it going back down into the alcove. Um, and then we need to drill some holes through the beams up here to take the wire along to where the light is to join the cables um, so that when you turn the ensuite light on, power will then run through that cable and down into the uh, dressing gown alcove.
Okay, so we've managed to get our cable all the way down from the floor above, out of the light fitting, down the wall, and back in and through the alcove. For any of you wondering why I haven't been using the grey cable kind of inside the wall or inside of the wood, um, it's because in this wall, it being about 60 centimetres wide, um, there was about 10, 15 centimetres or so of solid granite um, in there as well. So just making a hole big enough for the wires was a, a job enough as it is, let alone trying to make a, a hole big enough for the grey cable as well. So hopefully the cables are going to be okay in there. Next job is to drill from the mirror side in the ensuite, hopefully coming through into this wall somewhere and taking a feed from the dressing gown alcove and bringing it through to the mirror. So we've then got the ensuite light, the dressing gown alcove, and the mirror all on one feed. Okay, so little change of plans again. Um, we can't drill behind the mirror because it either goes outside, and if we come to the far left side of the mirror, then we go through the consumer board on the other side of the wall. So instead, our plan is to now take this cable, run it around the inside of the alcove, making sure it's hidden, drill through the alcove, into this plug socket here and attach it to the cable that is already attached to the mirror, giving it a permanent life. Okay, all the electrics is back in the right place. I'm happy that I can turn the electrics back on. Danielle's in the ensuite, making sure that things work. So, you ready for me to turn them on? Yep, ready. Okay, on. Yay! Oh wait, no, the mirror. What? It's not come on. Okay, what about if we... So the switch isn't doing anything now. How's that work? So the mirror's not coming on at all. And, is and the ensuite light is staying on permanently. So that switch isn't working. I'm absolutely baffled. How does that work? So after a quick call to DIY Disasters, AKA Dad, We've resolved the issue. We now have an ensuite light and an ensuite mirror that both work on the light switch. So now the last job, once dad comes back, um, he will bring some LEDs with him um, and we will plug them into the same wires that we now know work and uh, then we'll have some LEDs for the dressing gown alcove. So if you're wondering why there has been a little less content this week in terms of different jobs, it's because this job has actually consumed an awful lot of our time. I think I can quite confidently say that there were many, many times doing this job that I thought I was going to give up and I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, you'll be surprised how difficult it is to drill through 60 centimetres of granite, um, then trying to figure out electrical wiring when obviously the, the previous wiring isn't to the same standard and the right the wires aren't running the same way and you've got two earths and no live or live and no earth um so yes very very fresh stressful job not done a great deal else at all this week yet um but it's done Hello everyone, so I'm back in my upholstery studio and as I said last week I'm going to be starting to put some of the fabric clothes onto my chair. You saw that I had an order so I have all my equipment with me, I've got all of my research with me as well, I have spent the morning trying to get my head around how I'm going to go about doing this chair and I think I'm just about there but I've got my research, my laptop and my book to the side of me just in case I need any help. My timer is ready 
um, and I'm going to start with the bottom of the chair, moving then to the inner arms, the inner back, before we then do the outsides of the chair. So you'll first see me start on the base of the chair, so let's go. Once again, can I just add, I'm not a professional, I may do some things wrong, but I'm in the process of learning um, and I'm quite excited to try this, but also very, very nervous because it's something completely new and I don't want to do it wrong, so let's go. Okay, so bottom layer of Hessian burlap is now done. Um, I've left this front piece because this is going to create like a nice, um, I think it's called like an, a roll edge, just to puff it up a bit and make it a bit nice and a bit softer. Um, and we're now going to sew on some uh, bridles, I believe it's called, um, which is just some bits of uh, twine or string and that's what the hair is then going to stick to, to make it a nice cushiony base. So please bear in mind as well, there is a big cushion going on top of this, but this is just to set the, the base itself to make it nice and soft and squishy. Um, and again, this is going to be my first attempt, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the last step to covering the base, I need to just pop my top, frag fabric, top fabric on the front to cover this panel because um, this will be seen when the cushion goes on top. And then I think we're okay to start the arms. We're seven and a half hours in. Okay, so I've done all that I can with my chair today um, and this week. We've been quite busy with other things, so I've only managed to get this far. But I think it looks really, really good um, and I'm loving the material, so I'm really happy with that. I'm going to continue with the arms and the inside back next week. I have everything that I need, so I just now need the time to actually crack on. But very happy with the end result this week. Okay, so it's Friday night. Tonight is normally the night that I sit down and start editing for the YouTube video, but tonight is different. We are making our way to Remco and Norbit's house um, because we are meeting the La Perouse web, web designer and uh, we're going to write a short spiel about the chateau and us and, and being new to La Perouse so that we can feature on the website. As well as Remco and Norbit and the web designer, there's going to be a few more of our friends that live in the local area there as well. Um, so it's going to be really nice to see them. And I expect to get a bit of food and drink. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, catch up with you in a little bit. Probably show you little bits of what's going on and, uh, and uh, yeah. Hopefully I've got plenty of time to edit and get this out for <laughs> Sunday night. Fingers crossed. Alright, we'll see you later. Bye. Oui, 
So we hope you've enjoyed another Chateau de Bruges video. Fingers crossed at some point next week, Graham will return to the Chateau. We have started off our weekend with some really exciting events and um, doing some apple crushing and seeing some horse and donkeys carry some branches. We've also had a really big delivery of materials ready for the Jeep renovation. Um, so these are all things that you can see in next week's video. There's some teasers for that coming up, so make sure you stick around. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and click that notification bell to be notified of all of our future videos. Right, you gonna say goodbye, Merlin?